Jesus. This here is the Aza Regis. It's a cube case and it's probably super expensive. I actually don't know too much about it. It kind of just showed up much in the same way that our friends over at Gear Seekers apparently received their case. It's funny, sometimes stuff just shows up and we're not really told. I, mean, I, I guess we did have one conversation about it, but uh, yeah, it's here and I guess we'll build in it and see <laughs> how good or not good this thing is. I know that it's extremely expensive and it's covered by glass on virtually all sides. So airflow is probably not gonna be that great. This is more of like a show piece, something that you would want to build in if you were to display it in a museum or at CES or something like that. Uh, so I don't expect this to be a very practical one, but if you're interested in just seeing how it turns out, because it could go either way at this point, stick around. NZXT's BLD Foundation pre-built PCs are a great way for folks to easily get into PC gaming without breaking the bank. Reel in over 100 FPS in League and Valorant and over 60 FPS in Fortnite, all with settings at medium and in 1080p. That ain't too bad at all. And perhaps best of all, this build is super easy to upgrade down the line with a discrete graphics card, since you've still got six multi-threaded Zen 3 CPU cores to pair it with. NZXT's BLD pre-builds waive the $99 build fee since they're made in bulk, and you'll get a two-year parts and labor warranty with every purchase. Learn more about BLD systems, including this foundation PC here, via the link below. Let's see how this goes. I am pretty impressed with the packaging, considering how awkwardly shaped this thing is. They did a good job, you know, making it feel all secure and sturdy. And it is quite heavy, if you couldn't tell, because, oh, that didn't sound good. Ah, oh, okay, so actually two aluminum side panels, which is nice to use this brushed aluminum texture here. We have three tempered glass side panels and a single, just kind of like, I guess this is just thin steel here. So six side panels in total, I guess that's what we get for, opting for a legit cube design. Now this here is the base, the stand, if you wanna call it that, of the case. Yes, the case needs a stand. And this thing's pretty beefy, which makes sense because the case itself is very heavy. So you need to assemble this ahead of time and then this actually bolts to the chassis from the rear and then kind of sits in these little rubber feet higher up so that it uh, kind of, I don't know, the, the stance is, it's, it's, it's weird, but I guess it works for a cube shape. Maybe, kind of, sort of? This is just, um, it's just weird. I mean, in, in one respect, I think it looks awesome. But in another, I'm like, who the heck is gonna build in this thing? I mean, in terms of design, overall aesthetic, I really love this gold plating. It, it, I mean, it works, you know? Looks like the tempered glass panels are held in just by retention clips. That's uh, it's actually pretty convenient. But I mean, then, you, then you've got the layout, which, I mean, it, I guess it sort of kind of works, but at the same time, I'm really wondering where airflow is going to be coming for some of these components. So you can see how the motherboard's going to be sitting. It'll sit in here uh, with the slots going down that way. So your uppermost slot will be here and you can access it directly uh, from the rear. So there's no need for a PCIe riser cable, which is nice. But then you can see we've got like super minimal clearance up top for any sort of like fan radiator combo. Where I think we're gonna have to put it is underneath the motherboard tray. But then like, where are you getting air? Because right above that is the motherboard tray. So I guess we're gonna have to have like an intake set up and then the hot air is just gonna kind of chill in here. And then just for case, we got a couple of random storage drive trays. We got a three and a half inch and a two and a half inch just kind of sitting randomly next to each other. Again, all of this right next to where your motherboard's gonna sit. So I don't really see, I mean, and your power supply is gonna go underneath the motherboard. I mean, that's okay. So a lot of our cable management is just gonna have to sit in there. And oh my gosh, we already have a rat's nest to deal with. Now, interestingly, there are a few extra PCI slots here, uh, which again is in that area below the motherboard tray. And I assume you could also fit a graphics card here, but I don't see a riser cable in the box. So if you wanted to do this, you'd have to buy one of those separately. And on top of the fact that this case is already, I'm assuming, very expensive, um, that's not really all that cool. And if you put a card here, then you're not really gonna have space for an extra cooler at the bottom either. There's also a huge mirror at the front of this thing, and I'm not sure what it's capable of. There are wires running to it from the inside, so I'm sure there's some sort of RGB functionality, but we won't really find that out until we build in it. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and um, 
try doing that. So I decided to go with Alder Lake here, Z690 motherboard from MSI, pretty much a beast, should fit nicely with the fact that our case is also quite premium. Uh, we've got a 12700K here. This is, of course, an Alder Lake chip, uh, but this one is an engineering sample. This is the one I wanted to use in an earlier video, but decided not to. So this is a Core i7. I believe it has, oh my gosh, I think it's eight performance cores and four efficiency cores. I, I honestly, I get these so confused now that there's like two different categories of cores and then multi-threading on top of that. Anyway, we're gonna get this installed rather quick. All we need to do is pull back on the lever, drop straight in like so. And we've also gone with Corsair Dominator Platinum DDR5 in this case, not DDR4, although these modules do look quite similar to their DDR4 counterparts. I like that Corsair didn't change this up too much. I already really enjoyed the way that their uh, Dom Plats look to begin with. These are RGB and we're gonna install these in slot slots two and four as denoted by the motherboard itself. So we've got one going right here and the other going on the far slot. There we go. Also keep in mind, I've said this before, but just a reminder, if you are pondering DDR5 versus DDR4, remember that these are board specific. So this one supports DDR5, but just because the socket looks the same, right? You could in theory slot a DDR4 module into a DDR5 board. That doesn't mean that it's gonna work. The pinout is totally different. So mind that when you're shopping for an Alder Lake platform. Now we're gonna drop this board into the case. Uh, you know what? We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna slide it in from the bottom. This is really awkward, but it's what must be done for the sake of a case that is shaped like a cube. Okay, we will yep, just sit it kind of sort of like that. And I think we are situated. Yeah, just make sure you uh, relocate these standoffs beforehand. For whatever reason, the standoffs were not in the ATX motherboard position. So we're changing that now. If I can get my tool to work. By the way, we'll install the AIO bracket once the AIO arrives. I forgot that this is LGA 1700, so it needs a different mounting mechanism. It's on its way. Now we're gonna wire up this rat's nest of cables back here. So wish me luck. And unfortunately this case leaves a bit to be desired in the cable management department, especially considering you could potentially put like a graphics card here or something else. I mean, the fact that you've only got two large cable guide clip things, whatever you want to call them. So I've had to route pretty much every cable through that one or through this one. And that's it. There's no other zip tie or tie strap points. It, it's honestly leaving a lot to be desired in a case this expensive. By the way, I've got these two SATA power cables just kind of chilling here because they have to be connected to the power supply once we get that installed. Now to get our power supply in here, we're gonna have to remove this 240, 280 mil fan bracket. Let's get the cables out of the way. And then we want the fan obviously facing toward the camera because next to this we'll have that mesh on the uh, on one of the side panels. So again, most of these side panels are tempered glass, but uh, at least this one is mesh. And again, I expect we'll have to put our AIO down here because there's not much clearance up front. Now check this out. Boom. That is almost an exact match. This is a bit more of like a rose gold color and the color of the card is more of a champagne color. Some of you pointed that out in our how to paint a motherboard video. So I think I'm gonna stick with this. I know the colors aren't exactly a match, but when this thing is in the case, you're gonna have shading and all that stuff to deal with. So the colors won't look the same anyway. Uh, but, uh, and I know this is only a 5700, so it's a bit overwhelming considering we're putting a 12700K in here. But the color, I mean, it just, it works too well to ignore. So let's get this thing in here. And uh, yeah, I think she looks pretty darn good. Almost like they were meant for each other. Good supplemental power connected. And that's about it for now. So while we're waiting for our cooling solution to arrive, which should be any minute now, let's talk about some of the pros and cons I've run into while assembling this thing so far. First up, there's a ton of space between the front of this graphics card and this side panel here above the motherboard. I'm not sure if that was an aesthetic play or something they were looking for uh, from a functional perspective. Maybe they wanted like really fat cards to fit in here. I, I don't really know, but uh, it's, yeah, you're either gonna like it or not. I, and I think it looks a little weird. Next up, you can see up top here that we really don't have support for a 280 mil AIO. We just, we're kind of choked off by our fat DDR5 modules here. And I think this is a worthy trade off because I love these. So uh, yeah, having a bit more flexibility left to right would have been nice. At this point, we could fit a 240 mil AIO up top and it would be a very, very tight squeeze, but I'm still determined for whatever reason to try things from the back here because uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just want to see how this performs. Speaking of the back, what I really hate back here is the fact that this power supply covers the cutout in the motherboard tray to access your mounting gear for your CPU cooler. So now when the AIO shows up, I'm gonna have to remove the power supply to access that. So if you're doing constant swapping, maybe testing things out or whatever, uh, it's just a bit inconvenient to have it up here. I would have personally moved the power supply down to the bottom of this part here, because this is pretty much unused, apart from this like included fan hub, RGB hub thing that they've got. I, I just, I feel like swapping these out would have made a lot more sense because most folks aren't gonna put a graphics card back here. Now port selection is pretty good. You got two USB 3.0 type A ports. You have a type C port as well and you have dedicated headphone and microphone jacks along with, I think this is a reset switch, but I don't remember wiring a reset button. That's, that's weird. Ah, okay, so it was an LED switch, not a reset switch. I'm assuming that toggle up front just changes the effect that the RGB LEDs are running. Now back to PSU placement, you see that because this is so high against the back of the motherboard tray, we don't have a dedicated cutout for 8-pin EPS up top. We actually only have this one, which is further to the right of the board, which means we have to run this 8-pin kind of awkwardly across the top of the board itself. Now I got a bit, uh, bit creative here and I decided to run the cable itself uh, in between the fin stacks in this little uh, VRM heatsink here. So it's actually sitting nice and snug in there and uh, cleans it up just a bit. And one last thing I've got to touch on again is cable management. I just, uh, it leaves a sour taste in the mouth. Again, how much money you're spending here versus the ease of building in. This is more like an art piece to me. You, know, you make sacrifices for a build to make it look exceptional, like different than pretty much everything else on the market. This case certainly does that for you, but there are definite downsides to having a layout like this. And one of them is the building experience. So, um, you know, I, I spent a lot more time than most folks probably do cable managing. And this still, in my opinion, looks like dog shit. So, you know, you kind of just have to take it with a grain of salt. Know what you're getting yourself into. If you buy a case like this, it's not gonna be the most functional. Finally, two days later, <laughs> later than expected, although this might have to do something with the fact that I'm filming this around Christmas time, the Core Liquid P240 arrived. So this is an MSI 240mm AIO, and I wanted to stick with MSI because we also have an MSI motherboard, still got the same black and gray aesthetic going on, and I think just uh, sticking within the same product ecosystem looks better, makes for a more, co more coherent build uh, in most cases. So that's why I wanted to go with this combination here. And again, they didn't send this, I just bought it myself, and it was like under 100 bucks, so uh, worth checking out if you want in the video description along with all the other parts here if I haven't already said that. But uh, anyway, the last thing to get in is this AIO and I'm hoping we don't have to <laughs> take apart too much because this is definitely out of order. I'd normally recommend installing the AIO before you install your power supply, your graphics card, and um, maybe a couple other smaller things. So let's get this in there or at least try to. Let's see if the radiator sits, holy crap, this is gonna be too tight. I don't think this is even doable back here, especially with the bracket. Oh, it's gonna be crunched. We'll just put the fans on this side so that they don't interfere with the cabling. Uh, oh, is the, tu is the tubing even gonna reach the CPU socket? I mean, theoretically, yeah, but <laughs> it's gonna look really weird. Oh, and it's gonna be at such an odd angle. It's gonna be pushing down on that graphics card so hard. Man, this this sucks. I, I kind of wanted to fit it back there, but it just doesn't really make sense. The tubing and everything is just too rigid. <sighs> I think we might have to put the AIO up top here. Now this fan bracket is removable, which would have made things a lot easier. I'd actually removed it, but uh, I insist on making things more difficult for myself because why not? And like I said before, unfortunately, in order to get the mounting bracket installed for the AIO, we need to remove this power supply because otherwise, how are we gonna get behind the motherboard? All right, now we can get the block situated. We've got thermal paste applied and it's gonna be you know, kind of tight. Let's see. Again, this isn't really the side that I wanted the AIO mounted, but uh, I don't know, I still think that looks okay. And there we go. That is the look from the front of our case. Or, well, is this the front? I don't know, it sits like diagonal and kind of slanted, I, I don't know. Anyway, it looks pretty good. Now all we need to do is fit these panels on if, uh, if I can remember where they go. And now let's try to set it up on the stand. If I, again, can remember which way this all goes. So it sits, okay, so like this. So I need to, oh, this is so awkward to even pick up. I'm like scraping it, cause it's, oh, there's no feet. Oh, oh my gosh, this is heavy. Oh, holy crap, oh. Make sure it's sitting nice and Snug. I suppose it's actually probably a bit better to lay it flat on the front. <sighs> yeah, there we go. 
And then now I can flip this thing around. I know you can't really see that in the camera. So I actually install the stand with the build lying face down. And then these three itty bitty little screws essentially hold the entire thing up. I'm uh, not all that confident. Oh, yeah. Oh. Whew. Okay. I, uh, <sighs> I think we're good now. Well, as a, you built something that is really weird. This whole, this whole build is just weird. I mean, can we all agree that there's just no practical use case for this, like at all? Nobody would ever in his or her right mind buy this case, ex like specifically to build a PC in, unless it was going up on, I don't know, on the CES show floor or something, or maybe you're like a multimillionaire and you want something really crazy to sit in the middle of your living room. I don't know. This, this just screams like art. And oftentimes what you'll find with art, because that is very subjective, uh, is that it will make many compromises in terms of functionality for the sake of looking pretty. And this case, again, from Asa is, is literally no exception. It, it's, it's super strange. It's super inconvenient to build in. There are many compromises that I um, could touch on, like airflow, which obviously isn't gonna be that great. Um, the fact that the glass panels are just fingerprint magnets, of course, but the fact that there are four of them really doesn't help. Actually, there's three of them, but, but still. Uh, this rainbow infinity mirror looking thing, I mean, it's it's cool. Yeah, it, it's, it's cool. It, it's yeah, it's cool. So I guess what this really comes down to is price. I mean, that's the one unknown here. Uh, it's gonna totally determine how I conclude this. I, I'm expecting it to go one way. But uh, you know, if this was a $200 case, okay, I could see that, right? I mean, there are some cases out there that are very popular that are in the $200 price range. And I could see folks buying this just to have something different, right? And they'll, they'll look over the quirks and the, the, the strange inconveniences that are associated with the case this size in this form factor and on this weird stand. But uh, you know, if it's four or $600, there's, there's just no way. So what I'm gonna do is look up the price right now and give you my live reaction. I have no idea how much this costs. The Aza Regis, let's see what it sells for. Oh, here we go. The Aza Regis 902 sells for $400, which is about what I was expecting, four to 600 bucks. I mean, it's on the cheaper side of that range, which I should give you some credit for. I mean, you know, brushed aluminum side panels, tempered glass, infinity glass up front, RGB capabilities. There's a lot of room in here, but at the same time, there's not a lot of room because of how things are oriented. It's just, it's kind of strange. So it could be worse, yeah. Um, do I recommend it? Heck no. <laughs> it's just, I'm not crazy. And I don't think most of you are either. Um, it's, it's freaking weird. I don't, <laughs> if you can find a weirder case out there, let me know and I will build in it and I will compare it to this Regis 902. I don't think that you'll be able to find one. I think this this tops it, but I've said that before and I've been proven wrong. So um, please prove me wrong again. I'd love uh, an even weirder challenge, I guess. So if you guys like this video, uh, thumbs up, leave a comment down below, consider subscribing if you haven't already. You can find all the parts we use to build the system linked in the video description. If you wanna check those out, we appreciate that support and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Yeah. I don't really know what else to say. I mean, I don't, I don't recommend it clearly. It's, um, it's weird. I think, I think weird is like the word to describe this case. I don't know. It's not like a huge disappointment, but it's, it's so freaking weird that I don't really feel comfortable recommending it. And at that, it's just, uh, yeah, it's too expensive to really make sense for a lot of PC builds out there. I mean, there's a 5,700 in this build. How does that make, how does the case cost more than the graphics card at MSRP? It just doesn't doesn't compute. Anyway, we'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for building with me.